All right, everyone, we are here with a gameplay video for Misty Knight. Now, I did watch a video to kind of get a feel for her, maybe see some other ideal rotations, and a video I checked out was Jericho's, and it's going to be linked in the description below. So if you want a deeper breakdown on Misty Knight, I would suggest checking out that video. What I'm going to focus on is a short ideal rotation for her. Um some small components of her little utility, and then maybe a suggested way of playing her, especially for uh, early summoners. So summoners who don't have a lot of champions, maybe don't even have a lot of masteries unlocked. Um, but also some veteran summoners may take advantage of this particular gameplay or play style as well. Um, if you don't know about Misty, she has two charges. And when they're both at equilibrium and at max, which is 12, she will have an unblockable buff and a uh, guaranteed crit buff. And they refresh any time she tries to gain charges again, uh, instead of her gaining additional charges. And you can pretty much maintain them the entire fight. They last 6 seconds. But if they expire, their cooldown is 6 seconds as well. So not a very long time before you bring them back. And... That should give you some insight into that unique play style that I'm mentioning that'll probably be in the second gameplay uh, clip of this video. So we'll get deep into that as that video is going, um, but for now, let's go ahead and talk about her abilities and her ideal rotation if you didn't adjust your mas mastery setup and you were going for special attacks. All right, so there are many ways you can go about building charges. Just know that well time blocks, dodging, ending with a light combo, ending with a medium combo, build your charges, and then if one charge is three or more than the other charge, doing a heavy attack puts, brings up um, that lower charge by three. Um, and then once they're both at 12, you will see that you will gain this unblockable buff and this guaranteed crit buff. And then you've got your easy openings. Now the rotation, um, ideal rotation after baiting out a special is to throw a special two and hopefully you've got the full duration of that unblockable and guaranteed crit and then while that uh, cold snap is there you're landing all these guaranteed crits to place frostbite and then you're waiting for that frost or that cold snap to about to end and then throw the sp1 so that when those frostbites detonate you have a bonus damage since have the bonus damage since special one increases your attack rating. Um, so again, just to watch it, just so that you can see it all again, and we can go over it again. Charges to twelve. Once you've got or obtained that unblockable and that guaranteed crit buff, you're going to want to build the special two if you're not already there. Time your special two to come out when the opponent doesn't have any power since they are going to power gain and you don't have any way to control it. Throw the special two specifically when you've got those buffs at max duration and then try to get the AI to be passive by blocking and then going in to build those frostbite charges as the cold snap is running. Bait out a special attack if it's necessary. And then right as that duration is about to end on the uh, cold snap, throw the special one and then get the benefit of that attack rating. And you can see there the big red number we get from the detonate and the attack rating boost. So that's pretty much the gist of her. She could probably take out some of the smaller path fights in war with this rotation, um, but the fight would have to require almost nothing to kind of counter. So she doesn't really have any utility, as I said earlier, other than the evade counter with the cold snap. Um, so a pretty basic fight, and she'd probably do pretty well in war with it. Now while we're on the subject of utility, her, her SIG ability doesn't really help in that department either. Um, kind of does against the science champs. You can see there you can build up purification to 100%. Um, but if you look at that timer, 47 seconds to 27 seconds before it's finally activated, that's a long time to kind of wait. Um, and then there are the additional benefits against each class except mutant. Uh, and they're not, they're not that great uh, to basically give her any more utility so that you can throw that SB2 into SB1 rotation 
and not have to worry or counter um, any champion's abilities or any node's abilities. So that's her SIG. But the utility I do want to talk about starts with this parry and dexterity. Now whether you have a point in parry or dexterity or not, she has parry and dexterity. So she could be a good startup champ for a lot of new summoners that don't have a lot of masteries unlocked, specifically parry and dexterity, and they can still utilize her and build up to the equilibrium benefit uh, that you saw in the video earlier. So this is one form of her utility. And then this benefit above nine or more charges is the other um, benefit of her utility. Technically it's at six and then at nine you get the one where it's uh, guaranteed crits for six seconds. But the combo of six and nine which is going to be at 12 and anytime you gain an additional charge of either one while they're at equilibrium of 12 you pretty much have an unblockable champion that's always going to crit. So if you're looking at that, and you're looking at the parry and the dexterity mastery benefit, you're realizing that you could possibly pull everything out of the proficiency mastery and throw it into the attack mastery. Um, so that's what this next clip is going to be. We're going to take a look at how easy it is to maintain unblockable, how much damage you can do, and of course this is this clip is all reliant on the fact that most of your mastery points are all in the attack tree now i do ha still have some in the defense tree uh, but that's just because i need willpower since we have suicides and i decided to put in coagulate at max so that we don't take as much damage from the bleed and while i do think that this is something pretty cool and unique i understand that it's not always practical um, it's probably one of her downfalls that she would benefit from easy mastery changes, but we don't have that. Plus, it can get costly uh, just for one champ that's going to be unblockable when you can probably just bring a different counter uh, and someone who actually has the utility for the node or a champion. So here we go, taking on Rolk and LOL. Uh, there are no synergies here. There are no boosts. This is just strictly... Suicide Mastery is at max, Glass Cannon at max, I don't have Deep Wounds at max, but I think I have Assassin at max. Um, but nothing is in the Proficiency Tree. So Dexterity and Parry are all just her base kit, and that's why you're getting a unique color when it happens. Um, so here, I'm not going to throw any special attacks. We're just going to focus purely on the utility of the fact that she can go unblockable for the entire fight, pretty much. And while she's unblockable, every hit is a guaranteed crit. And we're just going to let this play out. Take a look and see how many hits it does, or how many hits it takes. Um, what I did add is right near the end, right around the 30% range, I decided to do that rotation we saw earlier because... I mean, at that point, the fight's pretty much over, so we're not going to worry about recoil damage. Um, and we'll end with a special 2 into a special 1 and timing that special 1 with when the frostbites, or with when the cold snap expires so that the frostbites get additional damage. So just going to let this play out and then check back in when we're near the end. And the last thing I'll add is pay attention to my tactic during the fight. There are many times where the AI goes passive and I just decide to medium medium based on his special or how much power he has. Um, and if he's close to special two, I just decide to medium medium. If he's below special two, it's a full combo, but I end with a medium so that we can constantly refresh those two key buffs in this video.
right, so we're creeping up on the last 30% here. We lost our unblockable and guaranteed crit buffs once. So it's been pretty easy to maintain um, and pretty fun, but this is pretty straightforward. And the only utility we really get out of this kind of playstyle is that she has a 36% chance to shrug incoming debuffs. So if we accidentally get stunned in this fight, she can shrug it, or at least there's a chance. And then she has a 12% chance to evade. So now I felt ready to throw special 2, so we got to get this special 3 out first. Once it's out, it's not going to do anything. If we weren't at max charges, it would have put us at max charges, but we've been at max charges the entire fight. This is just getting it out of the way so that we can build the special 2. So we're still playing the same game that we were prior to the special 3 taking advantage of the fact that when the AI is passive, we go and hit him, then we are unblockable. Baiting out special attacks, using any of the avenues to gain a charge to refresh these buffs. Now that we're at special two, we're gonna bait out this last special one. We're gonna refresh, throw special two. And just like in the earlier clip, we're gonna try and get the AI to be passive, and then we're gonna lay on the frostbites with the crits, and every crit hit gives you two frostbites. And then as we're approaching the end of this cold snap, we're gonna throw special one and let that do its damage. And that didn't quite kill him, we got 2% left, not a big deal, so now we're just going to chip away at it. And that's pretty much it. Um, pretty unique abilities. Um, and I, I could see it being practical in certain fights but there has to be nothing else going on in the fight, really. So that's the end of that video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and hope you learned something about Misty. Uh, hit like, subscribe, share, and I will catch you guys at the next one.